Hello, I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Surface Sessions. In this episode, we are looking at the Surface Pro 2017. We are going to run a bunch of music software on it to see how it performs out of the box. This is not after some kind of lengthy tweaking period or anything like that. I have hardly tested it at all. The purpose of this video is just to see what the out of box experience would be for a, a regular person, a normal person, buying one off the shelf, taking it home, plugging in a bit of music software. Could it be used? Would it play back? Can you use the onboard audio, the speakers that are embedded in here, or the headphone out on the side? Can you use those for music software? Along with that, I want to investigate whether these bits of software will play without any glitching or trouble. Because if you remember back to season two of the Surface Pro 4, I did a similar thing and ran into immediate problems. So much so that I had to abandon it and start looking at all the reasons why it was giving us so much trouble. So here we are with a brand new Surface Pro 2017. It's an i5 8 gig version and we're going to get stuck in and see how it goes. It's very exciting. Now I wanted to point out that I haven't done any tweaking on this except for just one or two things. I've turned off the annoying power thing where it's always shutting the screen down if you haven't done anything for a couple of minutes. So I've turned that off. It's still on balance power. It's not on any kind of high power profile or anything like that. And I've put it to quiet hours because notifications really do mess stuff up because they try to use the same audio system that your software is using and it causes a glitch and it bounces and it's, it's not good. So I've put on quiet hours. The internet is still on. I haven't put on flight mode or anything like that. Everything else is still working and we're going to see just what it does. If you're hoping for some really in-depth sort of benchmarking on audio software in this video, you're not going to find it. This is a general run through. Does it work? What happens when I plug the headphones in here? Does the audio system work? Is there any glitching? How's it going? That's the kind of nature of this video. I will get into far more in-depth ones in a little bit and look at everything individually to do the tweaking, to, to tease out the audio engine, to plug in audio devices and MIDI controllers and all that jazz is to come. This is just a first look at all these bits of software. Does it crackle? That's what I'm trying to find out because that is going to be our starting point. I'll bring you in closer and we can get stuck right in. So let's kick off with Reactor 6. The audio engine we find under here. It's set to Wasapi mode, which is Windows low latency, high performance driver architecture, which, although they claim it to be very low latency, is in my experience, not that low latency. It's lowish, but not the sort of thing that we want for real time playing, certainly playing percussion. I mean, it's suggesting down here that it has a buffer size of 480 samples, and that will generally speaking, give you a 20 to 30 milliseconds of latency which is what Reactor is telling us here. Let's load something up. With some Reactor things, you have to set it playing before you can play it. Very handily, I have to say, from the keyboard. So yeah, generally speaking, Reactor seems to be working completely fine. I've got clear playback, no glitches or stuttering as far as I can hear. The CPU meter over here yeah, is bouncing around as it does, but it's not hit any peaks. It's not given me any problems at all. That's nice. Let's try it with the headphones plugged in. So we go out to some bigger speakers. No, that's still coming out of the speakers on the surface itself. Let's check the settings. 
So the audio driver, there is only the one audio driver this is letting me select. If I go to the routing, it's here that I need to change it, but it's not giving me any other options just at the moment. If I come out and go back in, let's see whether that's changed. Okay, it's now coming out of the speakers. It's now coming out of the speakers up here. And if we go into the audio settings, the routing, you can see that it's now set to headphones. And I have options now for speakers as well. If I put that on, will it come back to the speakers? Yes, it will. So Reactor 6 looking pretty awesome at this point. <laughs> no problems at all. What we are seeing though is a demonstration of the audio architecture within the Surface Pro, which is this weird dual thing where you have one driver for the headphones, one driver for the speakers. Now talking to Microsoft about this because I can't find any reasonable reason why you would need access to speakers and headphones separately. It doesn't make any sense. There's no scenario I can think of that would use those two things at the same time. However, what Microsoft say is the reason why there are these two drivers is because the sound that you create on speakers and the sound you create on headphones is inherently different. And so to create the right environment with those speakers here, you need to have a separate audio engine, separate settings, and it needs to be tailored in such a way to make that sound good. When you're wearing headphones, that's a very different environment, a very different experience and so to have the best experience with the onboard speakers and the best experience with the headphones they needed to be separate and independent so that they can be treated absolutely differently and that i guess that makes some kind of sense but within audio software it's an absolute pain in the ass because nothing happens automatically if you are playing groove music or you're playing watching a video or something streaming off the internet you pull out the headphones and it comes out of the speakers. You plug that back in and it comes out of the headphones. Easy. But audio software is using the drivers differently. It's using them more intentionally. So for instance, within Reactor, when I plug this in, nothing appeared to happen. I had to go in and change the routing. In other bits of software, you have to go in and change the driver that's being used. So it's doable, but it's massively inconvenient. And in some cases, it just doesn't work at all with audio software. However, so far, so good. Reactor, yes, looking good. Next. Bitwig Studio. Now this is the one we expect to work because this works so well on everything else most of the time. So with this, the audio settings, again, Windows was Sappy or ASIO or Jack, which is kind of a Linux thing that I've not really looked into or got into at all. But ASIO, as we know, there's no ASIO devices in here. There's no ASIO for all. There's no USB audio interfaces that I've installed. So we are stuck with Windows Wasapi once more. This is automatically selecting the default device. So it's automatically selected headphones, which is what's plugged in at the moment. So we're going to look to see whether that works. If I pull it out, does it automatically select the other one? I don't know, let's have a look. It has a similar buffer size set down here of 480 samples, which it reckons is 10 milliseconds, which it isn't. It's 20 to 30 milliseconds, but let's not fuss over that for the moment. Let's instead, let's load up a demo and see if we can get some stable playback. Okay, good to go. Well, so far I got a DSP meter up here, a sort of a CPU performance meter, and that's pretty steady, pretty stable at the moment. Nothing peaking, nothing going on. There's no glitch in the playback, no crackling that I can hear. Let's see what happens when we pull out the headphones. 
Okay, it says, no, you've screwed it all up. <laughs> so now it's no longer working. So if we go back into our settings, settings, audio, it's now selected the speakers. So it attempted to do it, but it just wasn't able to make that happen. And now it's playing on the speakers. Plug that in. Oh, it gives it a go. It's changing. It doesn't know what it's doing. Oh, it held it together that time. Now it's coming through the speakers. So Bitwig's a little bit more resilient with that change between headphones and onboard speakers, which is nice. Bitwig has got this DSP performance graph inside, which gives you a little bit more detail on what's going on. And it's looking pretty sweet. It's looking pretty normal. Nothing extraordinary, no big peaks or jumping around. It's looking good. Waveform 8, let's give that a go. Version 8 of Traction. This is the new version. I hope to do a proper review of this sometime soon. And as it is, do I know my way around? Oh, I don't know. Settings, okay, that looks like a good place. Windows Audio, it's decided to call it. It's got output set as headphones, which is right, because this is here. And I've got a test button. Look, that's interesting. Under that, it gives me the option for speakers. I wonder if I can set that during playback. Probably not, but let's have a look at a demo song. Here we go. If I can find the play button down here. Now it's got a CPU meter over here, which is quite high at sort of 62%. This is quite an interesting page where it shows you what is using up the CPU. Okay, let's see if I can get it to change. It wouldn't do it while it was playing. Speakers, okay. Let's go back to my project. Now it's playing on speakers. That's pretty good. That's pretty resilient as well. But if I take it out while I'm playing, nothing happens because it's still set to play out of the headphone socket. But no, now I'm getting nothing. Because something goes on when you plug that in. So Windows does something. It does this change so that when you are watching YouTube videos or whatever, it can swap between the speakers and the headphone socket. So Windows understands that when you plug something in here, something has changed and it makes that change in software. In your audio software, it tends to screw it up. So sadly, you cannot be, you know, sitting there on the train, um, making noises and, and composing music on your surface and then go, hey, everyone in the train, listen to this, and pull the jack plug out and expect it to come out of the speakers. That just may or may not happen. Which is probably good, because you don't want to annoy a whole bunch of people on a train. Let's see whether we can get this back again. See, it says headphones there, but the test no longer works. Maybe if I put it to speakers. Doesn't like that. No, I right royally messed it up now. 
Okay, it's back on headphones. No, didn't like that at all, not a little bit. Can I move this to something else? Let's put it onto ASIO. Now, by the looks of things, I've kind of screwed. Oh, oh, it moved around, it had to go. I've messed up the audio engine. I'm back to Windows Audio. It's back, okay. So with a bit of fuss, waveform, can pull back the audio engine and recover from plugging things in and plugging things out again, which is pretty cool, that's okay. Pro Tools then, right, well this is the one that's more likely going to give us a bit of trouble. Now I've got my dongle, my eye lock here, that's going to go in the side. Give that a second. Let's give it a go. Now Pro Tools is spectacularly fussy over what audio engine it uses. Although it can use ASIO, it can use Windows drivers. So what we'll do, we'll look at the hardware straight away rather than trying to load a project. So the playback engine, okay, it's given us a, a message already saying, oh, this is not very good because Pro Tools only supports uh, sort of proper set buffer sizes. In this case, 32, 64, 128, 256, etc. It does not like buffer sizes in between to the point that it just won't run. It won't even try. It won't even give it a go. Any other piece of audio software will go, yeah, whatever, and just play back using those settings. Pro Tools, nah. If it's not the predefined audio buffer size, it will not support it and it will not play back. So currently, using the generic low latency ASIO driver, it doesn't want to work. Now, can we set it to a proper Buffer size, probably not. Unless we bring up the application. This is the, the, the panel for the generic low latency ASIO driver that comes with Cubase. And you can set a buffer size in milliseconds, but you can't set it in samples. So unless you're extremely clever and know the conversion between milliseconds to samples, you're not gonna be able to nail that setting so that Pro Tools will understand it. Here also is where you can set what you want the output to be, either headphones or speakers. And you would have to stop playback, come into here and physically, manually change it in order for that to happen. Now, can I get a project to load? Well, let's start off with trying to open the demo song, which came with Pro Tools, oh, which came with Pro Tools 11 called Kelly Malone, Earth and Stars. Now this uses a lot of the included plugins from Air, and they seriously screw with the scaling in Pro Tools. Pro Tools by itself scales really well, all the menus are correct, the sizing is good, that's all fine. But as soon as you load this fella, which comes with Expand and Air plugins all loaded up, the whole thing just goes sort of bonkers. Let me show you what I mean. See, it zoomed over here, the text has gone really small, then it's gone really big, it's trying to recover, and then this bit is really small. It seems to think it's on full screen, not totally sure what it's doing. Oh, and then it crashes. Super. Now, this may not have anything to do with Pro Tools. Well, you know, it does have something to do with Pro Tools, but it may be more to do with the demo song, which, you know, they really need to do a new one because it's so full of crappiness of those plugins and bits and pieces that it has a tendency to trip Pro Tools up. And that's what we're seeing here. Let's see whether we can approach it by a different way. Okay, let's open up this little test song. Now this is just uh, 16 test song audio tracks. I, it won't, it won't actually play. Now that I think is to do with the buffer size thing. Let's have another look. Yeah, yeah. If I set this to Windows Audio, give that a go. Then I get an AAE error. Remember, 6,117. That's nice. What does that mean? Who knows? All I know is that 
uh, Pro Tools is struggling with the audio architecture on the Surface Pro 2017. So as it stands, it's not really coping very well with the uh, generic ASIO driver and it's not coping very well with the Windows audio. So Pro Tools for the moment on the Surface Pro is a bit of a non-starter. That doesn't mean that it's not going to work. Once we start installing proper USB audio interfaces, proper ASIO drivers, it will probably work fine. But for the moment, out of the box, trying to use the headphone socket or the onboard sound, it's just not happening. Pro Tools is just not having it. Then you get round in a circle, it's not going to make me out. How do I get out? How do I get out? There. Reason 9, moving on. This is reason 9.5, which is very exciting because it likes VST plugins. Okay, let's find the audio engine in here somewhere. Now this has some kind of old fashioned options, which makes it quite compatible. Under here, I do have the generic low latency ASIO driver. I also have this weird Avid ASIO driver, which no one ever uses and no one knows really what it does, but it turns up anyway. But you've also got DirectX. The primary sound driver is going to use whatever windows are set to it, or I can set it to headphones or speakers individually. Then it also has an MME driver. Now MME is the really old Windows driver architecture, which has like a half a second of latency stuck into it. But it always works. It's what always used to work in Windows XP and stuff like that. But you just have to contend with this huge buffer that it uses before it plays anything back. So if we go for the primary sound driver and see whether we can get this thing to work, that might be the best choice. Now the buffer size it's given us is a whopping 4,000 samples. So it's, it's aiming to provide smooth playback because of the size of the buffer. But in this instance, that's no bad thing. sounding pretty good there's no clicks or pops or bubbling going on as far as I can tell DSP meter down here or CPU meter is looking all right not doing anything special and here you can experience the amazing latency of those audio drivers anyway let's try to pop this out and see if it makes any difference Okay, everything seems to have hung. Awesome, that's good. Yeah, no, it's locked up. Oh, so the audio driver is no longer responding is what that's giving me there. So let's go to preferences. Yeah, it's going, oh, what the heck happened there? Let's put it onto speakers. Okay, now it's in here. If I plug it in, it's completely unfazed. Put it to headphones. And now it comes out. Yeah, it doesn't like the unplugging of it. It doesn't cope with that very well at all. But other than that, other than the fact it kind of goes a bit pear-shaped, it's actually very good at using its drivers. See, and I can just set that back to it and it's pulled itself up again. Oh, ah, oh, it thinks about it. Hey, nicely recovered. So Reason here is actually showing us that it can be done. Kind of, it got in a bit of a knot. But going certainly from speakers to um, headphones, which is what I'm modeling here, I hope you're understanding that, that can work, sort of. So that's good. No glitching, no trouble, it's playing back, we've got sound, we can potentially make music with reason on the Surface Pro 2017. 
Next up, Cubase 9. This is another dime for a dongle. Let's whack that in there, give it a second. Right, let's close that and look at the audio system. So in here you get the mystery ASIO AVE driver and then just the generic low latency ASIO driver. That's the only thing we get. And this is suggesting an input output latency of 20 milliseconds, which is kind of what we expect. Over here, we can go to the control panel and decide whether we want headphones or speakers. You could, could you activate both? No, you can't. It's one or the other. That's all you get. So let's keep it on headphone for the moment. See if we can find a demo song. Great. Okay, well we know that's not going to work because this is using the generic low latency driver and it doesn't like it. It doesn't change by itself, you have to change it manually. But again, it's not pulling it back. Once I've taken it out, once Windows has gone, oh my goodness, this has changed, then that screws with the audio driver within here as well. So it's now back set to speakers. If I hit OK on that, is that going to have another go? No, I need to do something to reset it. Let's go back into here. Reset. OK. No, it's not having that either. <laughs> Put it on no driver. Switch. Put it on ASIO switch. OK. No, still not having it. Uh, not system link. What am I looking at? This one. So I put it back onto headphones. OK, so you can grab it back if you try hard enough. That's all right, but we're getting familiar now with the way that these two drivers work in that they, they work together well for Windows applications. They don't work together well for audio applications. And there's always a bit of fussing and fiddling going on. However, the playback within Cubase itself is sweet. The VST performance meter here is not bouncing around. It's not leaping up. This peak here is to do because we unplugged the jack socket over here and that then went oh my goodness I don't know what's going on but during playback this is completely fine no unusual spiking nothing weird going on it's looking really good one more thing to try Ableton Live Ableton Live has been working quite well generally speaking on the Surface Pro 4 even when other bits of software were struggling so I'm expecting this to work pretty well if we look at the audio options, this also has a number. You've got MME and DirectX as if it's using them sort of together. I mean, it's it's kind of the older driver architecture. Is that actually using Wasapi? Probably, or at least it's using the latest version of DirectX, which essentially becomes Wasapi over time. So that makes some kind of sense. It's also put in a whacking great big buffer size in order to ensure good playback. That's all right, we'll go with that. It's selected headphones as the output, which is what we've got at the moment. We'll give that a try. Can I find where the live set hangs out? It's buried in there somewhere.
Well, again, Ableton Live is performing perfectly fine. The CPU meter over here is relatively stable, nothing funny going on, there's no clicks, there's no pops. We just have beautiful music coming out of our Surface Pro 2017. Let's try popping the uh, headphones out. Nah, it's not having it. And once again, popping it back in doesn't then recover it. So let's go back to our options, preferences. It's having a go, but it's not very sure. Let's stick no audio in. Let's reselect. There we go, it's back. Didn't like swapping to the speakers. There we go. swapping back to the headphones, but it's the Direct X one that it doesn't like. I go back to the MME one. That's fine, because our good old MME driver is far more resilient than anything else. It sorts out everything. So Ableton, awesome, great. One thing of note is the old absolute mouse mode. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this where a tiny movement of either the pen or the finger creates a massive movement in Ableton. It's kind of like it's designed to be exponential. So if I try to grab this fader here and move it down, oh, now I've got to grab it first. Oh, it throws itself to the floor, throws itself down through a tiny movement of the pen. It throw, goes an awful long way. Now what you need to do to get Ableton Live to perform or rather to respond to the pen and to touch better is to enable absolute mouse mode, which I will do in another video when I get into the nitty gritty of sorting this out. But suffice to say that, you know, weird audio engines aside, the playback is stable. There's nothing funny going on. We are getting decent playback from the Surface Pro. So there you have it. Is it a surprise? I don't know quite yet, but that seemed to go pretty flawlessly. Pro Tools aside, of course, because Pro Tools is its own thing. It's far too professional to be filing around on something like the Surface Pro. Oh no, it wants to file around on huge computers. So it's gonna to refuse to run until you've put some proper audio hardware in there. So let's put Pro Tools aside for the moment. We'll come back to that as a later date, but everything else seemed to work fine. There was none of the bubbling, none of the glitching, none of the CPU peaking that we found when we first run the Surface Pro 4 back in the day. And that's great. I'm quite excited by that because it means, what it means is that the chances are that audio software is gonna work really well. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. And what that also means is that I can start making videos on how you use each bit of software, rather than getting bogged down in trying to get the bugger to work in the first place. Now, this is by no means a complete test. I haven't pushed it to the limits. I haven't checked to see how many plugins it can run. I haven't reduced the latency down to a proper playable level. So there's a lot more work to be done before I can say, yes, it's fine for music production. I can't do that yet. All I can tell you is that so far, just running software out of the box with the Surface Pro just without any tweaking seems to be working well. Now it may all completely fall apart once I've plugged an audio interface in or a MIDI controller or actually tried to have it down at a playable latency. I don't know, that's my next task, I suppose. The next step in our little journey here is gonna be looking at can we run low latency? Can we make it playable? And does that require an external audio interface? Probably, I suspect, but I'm going to check into that next, I think. But for the moment, I think that's a successful test. I have everything running. It all just kind of works. Fantastic. Makes my job so much easier. So, so far, so good. Surface Pro 2017 is playing back audio. It's playing music. It's perhaps inviting us into an opportunity 
to make some music. Fantastic. That's what we want. Right, I'm going to get stuck into sort of more in-depth testing and getting things sorted out. And in the meantime, you go and make some tunes. Mm -hmm.